What's up, guys? It's Brad Dew. I haven't done a video in quite some time, but I thought it was time. I've been trying to get organized. I got a lot th going on this summer. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm calling it one sketchy summer. Cause I got tons of projects I got to do. But before I get to drawing, I thought I would show you some recent art pickups I got. Um, some of the stuff that I'll be working on. Some of the stuff I've been working on. This is last, oh, not last week, but a few days ago I did this one. It's my first pastel in quite some time. Jessica I, UFC women's fighter. Boy, the color's really washed out on that. And I have not, <laughs> I have not figured out how to get rid of the shadow for, right there from the, it's like right in the middle of my drawing surface, but oh well. There's Jessica I. And I, I know a guy online who's like friends with her in real life. And he says he really liked it. And they're talking about maybe getting her to do some prints and get her to sign some prints. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos from other artists where they talk, talk and draw or just talk art. And uh, I went shopping yesterday for some anatomy stuff. There was a few books I wanted to get, but I decided to go one at a time so I don't just get a big stack. But this is what I picked up, Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist by Stephen Rogers Peck. I think it's a pretty darn famous book in terms of anatomy for artists, and that is one of the projects I'm working on. It is a lot of medical illustrations, like what I'll be drawing here if I get that far. I don't know if I will. Um, anyway, uh, that was recommended by Jeff Watts. I've really been digging his videos. Um, he just seems really knowledgeable and very, he's articulate, but, uh, but pretty real about like his advice to artists and stuff like that. So I just have been enjoying, he, he has these long, like two, two, three hour videos where he's drawing the whole time and fielding questions and stuff like that. Uh, so that was my art pickup yesterday, that book. And then today, I just got back from the store. Um, one of my Instagram friends pointed out that Michael's has a 40% off coupon. Good for almost everything in the store today for your whole order, not just one item. So I picked up a bunch of goodies. Um, some Comfics. They didn't, geez, they didn't have a big selection. These are actually not, I got eight of these, this, so about half of these. So this, this, this little bundle here is markers I haven't, the markers I've got most recent that I haven't got to use yet. Um, but I learned something, speaking of my Copics, recently watching a, vi a tutorial video by Copic um, about what the numbers mean. I never really knew that, the way it works, so I'll give you a couple examples. Um, I've always had a hard time picking out what color to use, um, what colors to use in combination, things like that. And what I found out, let's see if I can even explain it right, is that I've got this also this handy dandy little booklet that shows every color they have. and. So every time I get a marker, I, I mark it. That way, if I go marker shopping, I can take this and see right away what colors I have and don't have. But anyway, so like, let's take a look at this row here, R20 to 29. The R stand for, stands for red. You know, the, the B would be um, blue, BG would be blue, green, etc. So this is in the red family. And then the two numbers, after it. I, I did not understand this until I saw the video. 20 doesn't mean it's like on a scale of 0 to 100, it's number 20 or whatever. The 2 has to do with the color intensity. I think that's how it works. So like, um, so like, a, I don't know which way it goes actually. Anyway, the point, <laughs> the point I'm getting at, speaking of being articulate, is that 
the R20 family is going to go well together. It's more or less the same color from lighter to darker. So here I've been just grabbing random like, oh, I'll try the cherry white and then for a little bit darker one I'll go light tea rose and then I'll go to peach and then I'll go flesh. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I picked up two of the ones I picked up today were 22 R22 and 24 light prawn and prawn because I already had the rest of these. So now I have a good right there like let's say I wanted to try it uh, a monochromatic red, which I will do at some point, I will use R20 through 27 almost just the same way I would use my gray markers. And I'll give that a shot and see how it goes. And then for a real dark one, I probably would just use the garnet or dark red if I need one darker than that. Um, but anyway, I thought that was really helpful. I haven't really put it to good use yet, just because I just watched that video a couple days ago. So I just got that knowledge of um, what the numbers on the markers actually mean. So I've been drawing with them for three, two or three years now and never knew that. So maybe somebody watching this video will be like, holy crap, I didn't know that either. Um, let's see, what else did I get at Michael's? So Michael's is way overpriced, by, <laughs> by the way. Uh, their Copic markers are eight bucks a pop, which is more expensive than I've ever seen them anywhere else. But 40% off, now you're looking at four seventy something, something like that, and that's pretty much cheaper than I've ever seen. So uh, that coupon was well worth it. Um, another thing I picked up is some charcoal pencils. I am not a big fan of drawing with pencils, just like graphite. I, I never really have been. Um, it's not my strong suit, but there's just something I'm not crazy about it. So I re actually recently picked up these too. Creta, Creta color, Creta color, um, which is which has a nice range of sanguine colors. These are kind of oil, so sepia dark oil, sanguine oil, sepia light oil, white chalk oil. They're kind of like oil pencils, and I kind of dig those. I've, I've used those just a couple times. But, but I figured maybe charcoal pencils would be my next best bet if I wanted to do some drawing, not with markers, but with just... I've been trying to do more sketching and or I want to do more sketching. So I wanted to get... I suspect the Derwent is better than General's. But I figured I'd just buy two different sets so I could compare them. Um, so I got those, and then I got a few different drawing pads. Nothing fancy there, but they were 40% off. Um, and there's a reason I got all this stuff, too. Speaking of one sketchy summer, I've got a trip planned later this summer. We're going to go to Alaska for a, little, for a week or so. And I've got so much art to do this summer that I'm just going to have to take a bunch of art with me. So all, pretty much not the markers, but pretty much the rest of that stuff, I figured that will keep me busy on drawing over that time. So I'm going to have to get all my reference figured out. Like this is what... It, so. This is what I'm going to work on right now, and this is the biggest project I'm currently working on. I'm doing medical illustrations for, I thought it was for a college course book, but its I don't think it is. It's some sort of college resource material. Um, the guy who hired me is a professor at BYU. I'm not going to give too many details because I, I will get stuff wrong. But the moral of the story is I have a ton of these medical illustrations to draw. He sent me over 75 reference photos I've already done. It turned in the first 11, which were way more detailed, and I've shown a couple of them on my videos before. Sorry, I should probably be drawing while I'm explaining this now, so just give me a second. Let me think about what I want to do, and then I'll pick up where I'm um, 
So let's use some of these bigger ones for this. So, um, I'm not sure I like this setup. I'm, I'm gonna have to move around instead of moving my paper. No, I'm not gonna do that. Start at the bottom instead. I'm just gonna move it up here so I can see. Oh, I almost forgot the one thing that I was most excited to show that I got at Michael's. Uh, I got a pencil sharpener. I have just been using these to sharpen my pencils, and you know, they suck. Um, this little one actually is not that bad. It's much better than the blue one that is bigger. But I was like, this is ridiculous. i got to be able to sharpen my pencils, and I've never had a decent pencil sharpener. I've used um, X-Acto knives sometimes like to sharpen my pastel pencils. But anyway, I found this pencil sharpener, electric, I point curve axis. And one look at it and I thought, that's just some like generic pencil sharpener that's going to suck. But I pulled out my phone real quick and pulled up reviews and it got great reviews. So 40% off, I just figured I'd try it. And I just threw these in there and they're nice and sharp. Um, so, so far, I would have to say I'm impressed. And they're not, you know, regular pencils, so I don't know if that means anything or not. It, I, I guess what I'm saying is it should be able to sharpen, you know, your standard number two pencils, colored pencils, apparently these foil pencils, etc. Um, so anyway, I was super pumped about that. So, as far as my medical sketches, I've just got a lot to do. And the, this one, the bones, is the um, clearly the simplest. The rest of them are going to be a lot more complex. The first ones I did were brains. And then, at, um, you know, so it's going to be stuff like hearts and different organs and all kinds of all kinds of stuff so that is a new experience for me um, but I'm happy with what I've done so far especially the brains which were pretty detailed and I don't think I have real close to be able to grab them and show you real quick but I, like I said I've shown a couple before um, so I this is why I picked up that anatomy book too. I mean, I've drawn, you know, the human figure before a, a bunch way back in when I was going to school. Uh, but <clears throat> other than that, I usually stick to my face only sketch cards, you know. So this was, uh, this will be taking it in a different direction. And I enjoy it. Um, I was a little surprised by that. It's just, it's different than drawing faces all the time, for sure. It's really weird. It's, it's weird trying to draw just this little, just a regular old bone that's kind of boring, <laughs> to be honest with you, and make it look interesting and look good. Um, but I'll try. Um... So I've been drawing a lot of bones this week. This is each different section counts as a chapter, but like I said, I don't think they're going in a book, so I'm, I think that's just kind of for purposes of, of how they're going to pay me. Um, it's going to be actually being paid in royalties, so it's just... I'm really curious to see how that works out. It means... Basically, it means I'm doing a lot of drawing up front with no pay. But that made a lot more sense to me than the alternative. They, they offered to pay up front, but then it would have been an hourly amount. And um, potentially, the royalties will be significantly more. And that's just based on the, the guesstimates they gave me of 
how many they think will sell. But this BYU is not the only college that's going to be using this material. So um, the more colleges that, that buy it and sell it to, you know, so every student that takes such and such course would be required to, to buy this, um, just like a textbook. And that means the royalties could stack up. So we'll see. I, I just don't really know what to expect out of this. And I just feel like I just need to draw and draw and draw and do the best I can with them, get them done. It's a, a massive amount of drawing. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll have at least 75 to do, and I've already done. The, well, there there will be at least, at least 90, and I think that's not all. I think he's going to continue sending me more pictures. Um, over time, so I don't even know how many it's going to be total. But what I'm getting at is I'm going to take them, take these sketchbooks to Alaska with me and just a few pencils um, and a few markers, but not my whole collection. Just probably, what I'll probably do is just take the grays. And that way I can get a lot of drawing down there too. I'm really tentative when I'm not drawing with markers now because I'm just so used to that and only that so it's probably not the best um, example of me drawing on camera when I'm kind of not relearning it's just it's been so long since I've drawn with anything but markers with any sort of consistency so um, it's a little bit like relearning and and that, like I said, I'm just kind of trying to make make my marks count, so I'm not redrawing too much. Um, so anyway, I've got my medical drawings to do. That will go probably at least into the fall, honestly. There's no specific timeline on them, but obviously the longer it takes, um, for me to get the drawings done, the longer it is before I get paid, and the longer it is before the project gets finished, whatever that really means, I'm not sure. Um, so I want to get them done. But at the same time, I can't, I can't devote all my time to drawing medical stuff that I'm not getting paid for 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 quite some time. So I have to mix that in with the stuff that pays up front. And for that reason, I've got myself feeling really overloaded this summer, um, which is great. It's great and horrible all at once. Um, I've never been stressed about artwork like I am right now. That's kind of taking a toll on me. But I'm off from teaching. I say teaching, it's not really. I work at a school. I mentioned that. I've noticed that people who don't work at, <laughs> who I don't work with, call it teaching, but it's not really teaching. It's just the easiest way to explain it without having to give the whole spiel, and yet here I am giving the whole spiel anyway. I work at a school. I'm not a teacher. I do teach in that I work with one student, uh, primarily. I work in a classroom with five kids, but I'm one-on-one -on -one with a particular kid, and so I teach him. I think he was in my dream last night, so I have this, you know how you have this feeling like you hung out with somebody because you dreamt about him? I must have, because it's like, anyway, it just came into my head. I was like, oh, I just hung out with him. No, I didn't. Um, that's kind of how it felt sometimes, though. Like, well, we're just hanging out. It's my wingman, you know. People would see me and him all around the school together. We'd go on little walks. He's an awesome kid. Um, a lot of people didn't want to work with him because he's he's violent if he gets angry. And so that was my main goal this year was to curb the violence. And I feel like, all things considered, I did a pretty good job of that. He, he did not have nearly as many violent episodes towards the end of the year as he did 
at the beginning of the year and in previous years. Um, and he didn't attack me at all after the first month or two of school. So I think that had a lot to do with the, the relationship I built with him. Because he still, like if I was absent, it seems like those are the days he, he would have a violent episode and attack a sub or one of the other staff or whatever. So, um, anyway, I don't need to go into detail about that. I don't even know why I got off on that tangent. Oh yeah, I'm work. I'm off for the summer because I work this week. So, while I have previously worked during the school year and then had summers off, this is the first year it really feels like I'm making a, a go of it with artwork full time. Um, I've got enough work to be considered a full-time artist at this point. I've got all those medical illustrations, and on top of that, I'm working on... Well, as of a couple weeks ago, I was working on six different card sets at once, which is a lot. Um, but I just finished up two of them the other day. So I've got a couple of them finished, thankfully. That was a big, um, big relief when that happened. But I still have plenty to do, don't get me wrong. Um, two of the sets I'm doing, not large numbers, but large for me, 24 cards each. So that is a total of 48, and those are due within a month. And that's a lot for me. I'm still at, at over an hour a card, sometimes two for the ones I really either struggle with or really want to do a nice job on. And I've been trying to do quick cards here and there, but it just doesn't really happen very often. It usually takes me a good hour to two on every card. And I don't want, I want to get faster, but I don't want to get, I don't want to cheapen my art in the process. Um, having said that, one of the sets, I absolutely am going to have to do it that way. And I'm not going to even say what set it is, because it's partly, part of the reason I'm doing it that way is due to the way that the company handled the communication aspect of it. I wasn't even invited onto the card set. I emailed them and asked about it. They never responded. And then a couple weeks go by and I get the cards in the mail. So I had already signed on to do other sets. Um, and I was overloaded and there's no way I should be doing that set. However, I really, really want to. <laughs> so I've decided the only thing I can do if I'm doing those cards on that set is I have to do um, quicker, sketchier ones for for the bulk of them, which is not a terrible thing. That that's a real, that's pretty standard for a lot of the pack pulled cards from that set and that company. So I'm just, I'm really hesitant to do things that way, but I think I have to. I, I just don't see another way to do it. Um, and. Those might be, a lot of those might get done in Alaska too. And I might do some of those with, with these pencils, which I'm kind of digging. Um, it's hard to use this drawing as an example, because like I said, there's just only so much detail in here. I'm trying to get the, get a little bit of the sense of it, of the, not just the shape, but the form here, but it's just, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's hard to do it that way. Show much of it. The shadow, I think, will help it, help it uh, pop a little bit. 
So one sketchy summer. Six trading card sets. I'm down to, well, I'm down to five because I got two done and then I signed on for another one. And, um, boy, I've got a lot of things on my mind, especially given that I haven't done a video in a long time. I don't know if I should be using my charcoal pencil for the shadow here instead of the brown. Might be kind of cool looking. And I know I want to go darker than this. I'll go over it a couple times. Um, yeah, so I signed on for another new one after I finished up the last couple. Now, most of these sets are hush hush, so I can't even mention. Like the four that I'm doing, they're you know, official trading card sets for fairly large companies. I can't, I don't think I'm even supposed to mention yet on any of those. So, uh, but they all are sets I'm really excited for. Um, the only one that is not as exciting is exciting to me because it's a new company I haven't worked for and they've got a couple other properties that I am really excited for. So I figure by doing this set, which is something I'm not necessarily into, it'll get me the in to do the sets that I do really want to do. And that's kind of how I've looked at, ske at sketch cards from the get-go. You know, getting in with Topps UFC led me to Topps Baseball um, Museum Collection and then Gypsy Queen, which even though it's still Topps Baseball is a different department. I was working with a different art director on those. And then that led to, that's, I did that Star Wars Chrome Perspectives 2 set, which I think comes out in the next month or so. I haven't, have not heard that my cards are accepted yet. Um, but I can't imagine why they wouldn't be. So, and I did 25 of those. I'm really excited for that. Star Wars, to me, I don't know if this is how anybody else would, if anybody else would agree with me, but to me, Star Wars is kind of the holy, holy, holy grail of sketch cards. It's probably got the biggest following of any of the sketch card um, sets or companies or whatever and I love Star Wars I always have so I was just really excited to draw some Star Wars stuff Let's see I kind of want that shadow to be darker still but that's all right that's all right And I wonder if I should try and use this white highlight here, or if I should draw this pencil to me. It didn't seem like it worked very well when I tried to use it before that. Yeah, so you can't see that at all, can you? It does nothing. Man, that's terrible. So I'm going to use this. Try and draw in that highlight by bringing this right up to it. So I got a lot of card sets, man. Um, and it's great. It's awesome. I've been really frustrated with a lot of things going on with sketch cards and with companies. And, you know, that pastime set I did. I've worked for pastime twice before great results and then this time he just took the money and ran and kind of screwed over all the collector or all the artists um, some of the artists actually kind of grouped together and I think got a lawyer and and are going after him but no artist got paid anything for that set and that just totally blows and it leaves a sour taste in your mouth especially I'm glad I only did 10 that was the presidential set I did a few months back but um, some artists did, you know, 44, 50, a lot. So I was just glad I didn't do very many. 
Um, but especially given that I had worked for them before and that and that it was great. They paid great. Well, not great, but you know what I mean. They paid quickly. There was no problems. Got artist proofs too. It's just disheartening that that can happen. Um, and so it really had me hesitant to deal with smaller companies. And then right around the same time as when I, when I was drawing those pastime ones, I signed on to draw Prospect Rush Baseball. And now there hasn't been a problem with those. Um, actually, Will has been awesome to deal with. His communication is great. The pay was pretty reasonable for those. Um, the set, unfortunately, was very poorly received by the collectors. And I think sort of as a result of that, the sketch cards didn't get much notice. And, and have the very few that have been put on eBay sold much cheaper than they should have, in my opinion. The artists um, who worked on it were really talented. Juan Rosales, Emily Tester, Brent Naughton. Those, the, there's, I, my feeling is that in a product like that, it costs like $3,000 for, for a box or whatever. Um, those sketch cards should go for 50 bucks at least, and they have not been. Um, so it's disheartening. Um, I don't mean to get off on that tangent because I actually wanted to talk about the positives more than the negatives, but I can't get into the positives without mentioning that I've been disheartened for the first time since I started doing sketch cards because of some of these things that have happened. I've had a little bit harder time selling some of my artist proofs, not a lot, um, and, and I blame myself on part of that because I hold a high standard and, and I haven't been willing to budge too much on my prices. A little bit, yeah, but not a ton. And so, down, I think. I'm just going to keep drawing because I still feel like chatting, I guess. This is longer than I wanted it. Maybe I will cut it. Um, if I figure out what it is I wanted to say, I feel like I did want to say something. Oh, yeah. Um, so the other day, just when I was starting to feel disheartened, I get a new email from a new company. It's not a new company, but it's new to me, and it's another baseball repackaged product. So it's not entirely unlike Pastime or Prospect Rush that I've worked for before. And so I... A, I'm totally overloaded already this summer with work. And B, I'm pretty hesitant about doing anything for these smaller companies um, unless there's something really in it. And I don't, I hope I don't come across like a jerk or like I'm un, like I'm being selfish or ungrateful or whatever. It's just if there's one thing I took away from these, from a couple of these incidents recently, it's that I got to be picky about what I'm taking on, what sets I'm doing, um, because I'm overloaded. And so I can afford to be picky, and that's that's good. I want it. You know, I, like I said, I can't, this isn't a complaint. I'm not complaining. I'm so grateful and thankful that things are going well enough for me that I can choose to be picky. Anyway, here I'm almost telling the guys I'm, that I can't do it. I didn't say I can't do it. I said I'm super busy, so you know, unless it's it's totally worthwhile, I'm not going to be able to do it. And they were able to give me a really nice offer. Um, and so I'm going to try to fit it in. I, I was very honest about that. I think he maybe thought I was just trying a marketing ploy when I said how busy I was because I said I will be able to almost not do anything for the first month or almost two maybe and he's like okay I understand and then we talked about numbers and they came at me with a really nice offer and 
Um, and then he's like, I need, can you do 30 to 50 cards a month? Nope. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can do a handful in the first month or two while I get all the stuff that, you know, has definitive deadlines done. I can, I'm hoping I can get enough done to, to kind of appease them. And then, honestly, in the coming months, if, if they're going to need that kind of output from me and be able to pay what we talked about, um, I would like to increase the number I do for them. So we'll see. Uh, it's, it's all just hearsay for now. I haven't got the cards or started or anything, but i got to tell you, it sounds promising. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm up to this summer is I, I'm going to have to treat my art completely differently. I was getting myself really overwhelmed when I was listening to some of these art videos with, you know, from other artists and there's a lot of really good ones and I'll, I'll throw out a couple names if you guys want to check somebody else out. Oh, if I can remember. Wow. Jake Parker. Uh, Jake Parker's got some really cool videos. He draws a lot of robotic type creatures. He's he's big on on you need to fill out sketchbooks just sketching. And I want to do that kind of thing, but right now I can't work that into my schedule. And I know that I at some point I need to, and I want to. I just I was getting myself frustrated because I'm listening to this guy talk about how, how important it is to be doing sketchbooks and just sketching and drawing in addition to whatever jobs you're doing. And I'm like, I'm overwhelmed just with the jobs, <laughs> not to mention putting in any kind of free drawing or drawing on my own. And so I got myself kind of in a worked up over like, feeling overwhelmed, like i got to do all this other stuff in addition to my jobs that I've signed up for. And then I got to thinking of it, and it's like, not yet. I just can't worry about that yet. <laughs> I've got to do the things I've got to do. I've got to get my card sets done, and I've got to keep plugging away at these, at these medical illustrations in the meantime. And once I get a handle on that, Yes, I do believe I should start to do more sketching and, and you know, I grabbed, a, I bought a couple sketchbooks because I want to do that and I bought some new tools to try drawing with and, and to try new materials and new techniques and I've been watching videos with people drawing different things and with different techniques. I found an, a couple awesome artists on Instagram last late last night. I always have a tendency to grab my phone. I know that you're not supposed to do this last thing before. as I'm crawling into bed. I jump on Instagram and spend five or ten minutes looking up keywords that interest me. Sketch cards usually. And liking other artists drawings and stuff like that. And last night I looked up I think I looked up creature creature sketch. I don't know. Creature sketch? I don't know. But I came up with a couple really cool guys who, like, J.S. Morantz is one. I, I had already found him, but who designs all these awesome, creepy creatures. And then last night I found one or two more, one in particular that stood out, but I can't remember the name. So I apologize for that. I'll, I'll try and remember to bring it up again next time when I do know his name. I think it was a Swedish artist. Just really creepy, like, actually a lot of them look like Groot, <laughs> with, but with, you know, creepy features, and just really cool creatures. Um, or they look like it had a bag over its head, or, I don't know, skulls with different variations. Just some cool drawings, and I was like, God, I gotta start doing stuff like that. 
see what's in my imagination because I know I can draw what I see. Um, I don't know what I can. I don't know that I can draw what I see in my head. So that's something I want to do and work on and learn. It's a different type of drawing altogether. So anyway, as I'm saying that, the reason I brought it up is because I don't want to get myself worked up over feeling like I need to do that kind of stuff. Yet, I just felt a whole lot better when I when I realized, look, just focus on getting the stuff done that needs to get done, which is these and sketch cards. Um, and in addition to all my sketch card sets, I've got commissions. Um, I finally did that Jessica I that I showed at the beginning of this video. Man, I put that thing off forever. Because it's so hard for me to switch gears from markers to pastel, especially to pastels, because i got to get all my pastels out. It's a totally different process. It's a totally different medium. And, and I just was dreading it, even though I really like drawing with pastels. Um, and I did struggle through it. Man, it gave me fits, but in the end, I got something I was really happy with. Or at least kind of happy with. I shouldn't say really happy with. Because um, I did struggle with it, but, but I was happy. And then, and then hearing that she liked it is always a really cool sign. I've been getting a lot of that too, especially from Instagram. Um, a couple of those kickboxers, Joe Schilling and Joe Val, Joseph Valtellini, both gave me the thumbs up on the drawings I did of them. Coincidentally, those were both for the same customer. And then poor Joe Schilling took one of the worst knockouts ever the other night in an upset on Bellator. Man. Um, let's see. So I've got a commission. Well, I've got some commissions still to do too. Um, and I'm trying to tackle that type of stuff. Oops. I'm trying to tackle that the commission type stuff on video because... One of the things I can do this summer is spend more time on Jeff Lafferty's um, ArtCast show, where three, four, five, usually there's about three or four of us on at a time, but there are five or six different artists that come on the show, and we draw every weekday morning, and I, I don't do it every day, um, Jeff does every day. Who else comes on it varies from day to day but anyway I, I started coming on I went what two or three times last week and, and I wanted to make that kind of one of my normal weekday routines during the summer because it gets me up and going it's early in the morning it's like 7 45 or so my time I think so it gets me up and going and gets me working um, and the trick with it, it though is most of what I have what I'm drawing is the sketch card sets that I'm not supposed to say I'm working on yet or show anyway and so I have to be careful about what I'm gonna draw on the show if I'm gonna go on uh, I have a feeling you'll see me doing some medical drawings on there because that's the, what I need to be getting done there's something still missing from these. Um, it's just, they're just really plain, but like I said, there's only so much you can do to make the bone interesting. But this guy, this guy sure does it. He's got these same bones drawn in here, you know? And they have a lot of form. I was looking at that, I was like, man, he's, this isn't the same, but close. You know, those, maybe it's because he goes, really dark on the darks even though it's a white bone um, that sort of thing that I just showed that's kind of more looks more like a marker technique to me but I'm doing some of, some of them in markers um, and I'm you know I'm putting some contrast in there these also I don't want them to be super sketchy I want them to look detailed and finished or whatever, but at the same time, I think it's okay to have some sketchy qualities to some of them. 
You know, some of the ones that were super detailed, like the brains I was doing, yeah, I went, I went kind of all out on those and spent several hours on each one. You know, obviously I'm not spending hours on each of these, um, but that's good because I got to just get them done at some point too. Um, anyway, I was I was throwing out some names of videos I've been watching. Uh, Jake Parker, I said him, he's cool. Will Ter oh, Will Terrell and Will Terry both. That'll confuse you. Will Terrell, I was already familiar with and had been watching his videos. I really like him. He's a really motivational speaker. He's kind of a cartoonist, uh, kind of not caricatures, but kind of caricature type stuff. I think he's working on Bugs Bunny now, like an official as his day job, you know, with. Who the hell is that? Disney? Warner Brothers? Something like that? Um, he just, uh, when he talks, he doesn't just ramble on. He usually is telling a specific story or, or tackling a specific subject. And he's a guy who's had highs and lows. Um, and so he's able to talk about, you know, the struggles he had and things like that. And actually, Will Terry... <laughs> is much the same. The first video I watched of him went through like how his wife was real sick and his, I think maybe his son or something and how at one point they lost their house and lost their car and he was struggling through trying to do art. I might as well stick with the same technique with this one, right? Or should I do, maybe I'll bust out the charcoal pencil for this one. Since I just got those. Let's try it. it. Um, Will Terry is a children's book author and, or illustrator, I guess. Maybe both. Um, but he, he's really good too. He's very professional in his approach, I guess. I would say. So these have three different hardnesses or darknesses and a white pencil. Let's see. I think I'll throw these right into the sharpener and see how they do, because they don't come super sharp. That's eh, not bad, actually. I'll use them like this first. Um, so, let's see. Jake Parker, Will Terrell, Will Terry, Jeff Watts. I think I mentioned him earlier. This book I bought. And maybe that's it. In fact... Maybe I'll hold off there, because I don't really want to put this over an hour. It's already, I was thinking this was going to be a 20 minute one, but I get to rambling. So, not very exciting drawings today. It was more just about an introduction to my summer and what, <laughs> what to expect. And honestly, some of the drawings, if I do any drawings on video, I don't know that I have too much that's going to be super exciting. I'll do a few sketch cards that I can do. Um, but like I said, most of it's hush-hush at this point. Those are more fun to do on camera. With these, I'm kind of experimenting with each one in, in a way. Like I'll, show you. I'll show you some of what I've done. Oh. Oh. Maybe. I thought I had one. So here, here are some of the other bones. I just, I tried different, you know, a couple more of the sepia ones using the same pencils I just did. This one's lighter. I didn't use that pencil at all today. Maybe I should have combined them. This one with markers. I like the markers best still. Bones in the hand. It's kind of that was kind of a fun one. Pretty, pretty detailed, you know. I did a couple like this on toned paper using a lot of white, uh, which was kind of hard to do. I haven't found a white that I really like yet. Uh, and then uh, these are the brain ones that I did before. Way more detailed. I did, or not, they're not all brains, but 
そう<laughs> Way more detailed. I did all of these, I did in markers. I'll try and show you some of the ones that are a little bit different rather than this, because some of them are the same. Same thing from a slightly different angle or, or more of a close up or something like that. But these were fun.、Um, fun and, you know, took a lot of time. Going through, getting all the details. And then this was the first one. That was kind of a test. That was kind of like. I don't know if that's going to be a part of the book or whatever. He was just like, here's one that's super complex. And if you can do this, then you can do any of the other stuff I'm going to send you. <laughs> so I made sure to take my time on that one. And, Yeah, I've got quite a few of them here, huh? That's kind of. They kind of add up. So, these I spent, you know, most of these took me, like I said, several hours compared to the ones I'm working on right now. Here, that I just did two of them in an hour, so don't tell. Don't tell them I can do it that fast on some of these. <laughs> and I probably will go back and add more detail. I, I know I've said before on camera, but I have a real hard time. Talking and drawing at the same time. And so, even though I can do it for some of the, it's like, it's really hard to do the beginning stage where you have to get the drawing accurate. And it's really hard to do the end stage where you really want to tighten up all the details. But the middle part <laughs> is a lot easier to kind of get through, just kind of, you know, put some time in getting the values in there. And then doing the harder stuff off camera often works out. Or not necessarily off camera, but when I'm not trying to talk through it. Anyway, so that's a good enough video for now, for sure.、Um, kind of neat to be able to post something. so. All right, I won't have a ton of videos. If you want to see me draw and ramble on like this this summer, You're going to have to join Jeff Lafferty's Patreon, I guess. I think right now all the videos are Patreon exclusive, which is kind of neat. He kind of had to do that for a couple reasons, but、um, basically it means, it means he's making a little bit of money.、Um, and you get to watch the videos. And、um, also because of that, the viewership is smaller. It's not, you can't just type it in on YouTube and find it. You have to actually have to get the invite because you're a Patreon customer or a patron. And so, so we talk a little bit more candidly sometimes, too.、Um, I don't know. You get a little bit more of the inside scoop of things. I try, not, I try and be pretty open anyway, all of the time, but I also try and keep a pretty professional tone. I don't really. Want to talk bad about anybody unless I really feel they deserve it. So, all right, thanks for checking in, and、uh, I'll probably have some other videos, but it's not going to be a, like, you know, I did 100 days of sketch cards where I did a video every day. It'll more be, it'll be more like、uh, maybe one every couple weeks or every month this summer. We'll see. Thanks a lot. Catch you guys next time. I'm Bradu, braduderstrom.com. At the real Bradu on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Alright, later.